Kamehameha. Wow, man, get part one. We got cut off. Get part one, man. In 17 minutes, get part one, man. Because we've been surfing the wave of Kamehameha, the great born in uh, Hawaii. Hawaii, king who united the Hawaiian Islands. Founded the Kamehameha dynasty. All right, so who is this Preston, man? Who is this priest king? Who is Kamehameha? We about to learn how to Kamehameha. Now they're saying he's born around the time that Haley's Comet lit up the Hawaiian night skies, man. We just digging on comets and stuff. Which means we're digging on what? Meteors. Shooting meteors. Dragon. So if he's born around the time that this meteor is shooting off, this Halley's Comet, they want to title it. We're just talking meteors, dragons, and we're just talking Prestors. Because a Prestor is a meteor. A Prestor is a comet. Prester, a meteor thrown from the clouds with such violence that by collision it set on fire. We're just talking meteors, we're just talking Presters, we're just talking Kamehameha. By this prophecy, by these prophetic signs that he would be a great leader. So prophets knew somebody was coming to unite the islands. And he came with his energy, his energy weapon. But now you know what energy we're talking about. That fire, that water, that earth. That energy, man. Get all the links below. The Kamehameha is formed when cupped hands are drawn to the user's side. Now, again, again, hold up. She told a carrier that it would be easy to remember the name of the attack if he used the name of the cultural Hawaiian king named Kamehameha or Kamaya Kamaya. Might be the traditional way. Because that's how they say it. How do you say it, my nigga? Kame Kamehawa. Kamaya Kamehawa. The go. So they're using the name of a real person, right? They're using the name of a real person, right? For their Dragon Ball Z energy super weapon, right? They're using the name of a real person, right? A prester, a meteor, right? They're using the name of a real person, man. A fierce, violent person. To them, the hijack looks at Kamehameha as a fierce, violent person. They look at the Naga, the Negro, as a fierce, violent person. They call you savages, you're violent, you're rioting. You're making a tumult, a revolt. They're calling you devils, right? Children of Satan, you're marked. Children of Cain or Khan. Cain or Khan. Male or female, this man or woman is a dragon. That's what a dragon is. Fierce, violent to the hijack. Violent to the hijack. Well, how do you get so violent, my nigga? Kamehameha was born into royalty, they say. How do you get so violent? How do you do the Kamehameha? <clears throat> now she's using the name, they're using the name of the Hawaiian king. 
also known as the one set apart. So this saying that this Kama Kama or Kamaya Kamaya is literally talking about the set apart one. The one set apart. Now let's learn how to Kamehameha. <laughs> Alright, the Kama the Kamaya Kamaya. Uh, the Kamaya Maya or Kam I say Kamehameha. It's for when cups cupped hands are drawn to the user's side. And make sure there ain't no kids in front of you, man. Make sure ain't no people, you know, make sure you got some clear space just in case you get some energy popping on. Now you gotta cup your hands. Cup your hands to your side. Alright. And the key, right? The Chinese say chi, but that CH is a hard k, k which is the dragon k, the go. We're talking about the Kamari Kandam. You're talking about the you're talking about the Kari, it's the Carolinas. The Mashika. The Wakada. So the Kamaya Maya is formed when cupped hands are drawn to the user's side and the key is concentrated into a single point between their cupped hands. The hands are then thrust forward to shoot out a streaming, powerful beam of energy. The blast can also be used generally under extenuating circumstances, my naga, my negro. Are you in extenuating circumstances? Are you tired of being a slave? Well, cup your hands together and Kamehameha Wa. The blast can also be used generally under extenu extenuating circumstances with just one arm or even the feet. Even the feet. In most variants, the user utters the word. Let's do it together. Ka. Ma or me, ha, me, ha. That's why I say it that way. Look how they breaking it down. Now you might have heard it on Dragon Ball Z. Kamaya, Kamaya. All right. Sounds sounds nice. <laughs> I'm just breaking it down for someone who doesn't watch Dragon Ball Z. All right. I ain't got that brainwash. I'm just looking at it. Ka, ma, ha, ma, ha. As he or she, remember that ha is the breath, is the hey, right? Is the ha. As he or she changes and releases the attack. So you got to cup your hands together. And then thrust forward to shoot out a streaming powerful beam of energy. You got to put that key, concentrate the key into it. A single point. A single point between your cupped hands. Put the key on them. Then the blast uh, can be done with one arm or even the feet. You could do it with one arm, man. Just do the feet. In most variants, the user utters the word, Kamehameha. Wow. <laughs> As he or she changes and releases the attack, Master Roshi's Kamehameha. It's called the original Kamehameha in the Budokai Tenakichi series and requires some time to charge it up. The Kamehameha was invented by Master Roshi by practicing for 50 years spinning pre spanning pre Dragon Ball by drawing his Latin key into the palm of his hands. Roshi is able to expel an explosive beam of key energy wow can you do it my naga you are the original just know that they're getting it from a real source a real person and they might not be play playing they might not be making it all up on you when they kamehameha now by drawing his latin key into the palm of his hands Roshi is able to expel an explosive beam of key 
Goku learns it after witnessing Master Roshi unleashing the blast to extinguish the flames at Ox King's home on Fire Mountain. So he unleashed a blast to extinguish flames. Huh? At the Ox King's home. The Ox King. The Ox. Does that remind you of? The powerful Ox, right? The Aleph, right? Let's go. To Roshi's surprise, Goku successfully performs the technique on his first attempt, although it is only strong enough to destroy the car that Yanka gave to Bulma earlier. All right, man. All right, man. So just want you to know that when they talk Kamehameha, when they talk Kamehameha, they're talking about energy, frequency, and vibration. When you talk Kamehameha, you're talking the Naga. You're talking the real. You're talking the Dragon, the fierce, the violent, the violent, fierce energy to the hijack. The violent, fierce charge. The violent, fierce release, the attack. Who is the Naga? Who is Kamehameha? Oh, we're going to get the truck. This is a really a wake-up call, man. As we've seen our volcanoes waking up in Hawaii, is pointing us to this Hawaiian king. is pointing us to the drop. That's a recent drop. I mean, Kamehameha, origin, original name, Paia. <coughs> By name, Kamehameha the Great. A right. Hawaiian conqueror and king who by 1810 had united all the Hawaiian islands and founded the Kamaya Kamaya dynasty, the most enduring and best documented line of Hawaiian rulers. So this ain't no joke. This ain't no play play. This dynasty was the most enduring and best documented line bloodline of dragon king first name paia meaning hard-shelled crab the future sovereign was the son of kiowa a high chief and of kekui poiwa a daughter of the former king alapai a hawaiian tradition tells that a bright star here we go again here we go with the comments and the meteors, right? The Prestors, the dragons. So when they say bright star, that's code word for meteor or, as we got, dragon. Right? A bright star, a meteor, a dragon. Let's go. A dragon, a shooting meteor, right? A shooting meteor, dragon. Fierce, violent person, shooting meteor. So stay, stay on point, stay on point. So there's a meteor or a dragon involved. So the Hawaiian tradition tells that this dragon, they're calling Kokoiki, Kokoiki, appeared just before the great conqueror was born. So when they say, oh, a sign in the heavens, they're saying, we know when the dragon kings come or the dragon queens because there's always a dragon that's going to appear when they're born. And they're calling it again. The date coincides with the appearance of Haley's Comet. All right. Meteor, dragon, let's go. When Kokuiki was viewed by the Kahunas, those are the chiefs, the priests. Hawaii's mystic seers, it was prophesied that a great leader was about to be born who would defeat all his rivals and reign supreme over all the islands. The infant prince was ordered to put to death Alapai, but was reared secretly and grew to manhood, taking the name Kamehameha, 
meaning the very lonely one or the one set apart. At the death of King Kala Nuipu in 1789, the island of Hawaii was divided between his son Kawolayo and his nephew Kamehameha. Despite jealousy between the two cousins, relations were peaceful until July 1782. Now you know the hijack came over here by then, so you know that they incited beef. They say that they incited tribal war. And this is another one. When a dispute between their chiefs, Kiyomu, led to the outbreak of war, right? In the ensuing battle of Mokuwa Hai, Kiwolowo was slain. Kamahamaha then embarked upon a series of conquests that by 1795 had brought all the islands but Kauai and Nihau under his control when these were ceded to him through peaceful negotiations in 1810 Kamehameha was undisputed ruler of the entire island group although autocratic in principle Kamehameha set the governments to administer each island he retained the tradition harsh Kapu system of laws. Laws. So this is a lawgiver, a priest king. But he also promulgated the Mamalaho Kanawai, the law of the splintered pattern, paddle, which protected the common people from unduly brutal aggressions of powerful chief so these laws were to protect the people now watch this part just like we dug on Kitsukoto that Kitsukoto never practiced human sacrifice he was against human sacrifice so when they talk about the sacrifices they're not talking about your people they're not talking about the people following Hawashua Joshua they weren't down with human sacrifices the real Aztecs were not down with human sacrifices and what's this got to do with Kamehameha? He was outlawed. He also outlawed human sacrifice. Another dragon king like Kitsukoto who did not deal with human sacrifice. I mean, she, if you ask me, this has a lot of Kitsukoto, Joshua type of connection, uniting all the islands. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Phantoms and duplicates. He outlawed human sacrifice. He outlawed human sacrifice rites that had been performed in former times to increase the mana or sacred power of the king. A shrewd businessman, Kamehameha, amassed a fortune for his kingdom through a government monopoly on the sandalwood trade so they had the sandalwood on on lock on deck and through the imposition of port duties on vesting ships he was an open-minded sovereign who rightfully deserved his title Kamehameha the Great according acclaimed as the strongest Hawaiian ruler he maintained his kingdom's independence throughout the difficult period of European invasion. <coughs> They're trying to say, oh, European discovery. No, n mother, some, some of them, you some of them, some of them, you didn't discover a damn thing. But an entire kingdom that's already rocking for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, thousands of years, exploration, code word for invasion so he's acclaimed as the strongest Hawa ruler who maintained his kingdom's independence throughout the difficult period of hijack 101 so called European discovery and exploration invasion of the island a task that proved too great for his successors. We're just talking Kamehameha. And there's all kind of, you know, statues of Kamehameha. You're going to just see nothing but these black 
melanated figurines, statues of Kamehameha the Great. And it's right in our face, Bo May. It's right in our face, Bo May. <laughs> Kamehameha. And then over here, he got his Papa Smurf hat on. Of course, they jamming up his features, you know, but they still, you know, they put them on these super melanated, super carbonated, you know, statues, man. Look at all this. Look at all that. And, you know, it reminds you of that Papa Smurf, man. <laughs> When you watch this Papa Smurf, you know, go back and watch the Smurf. These blue people, man, about the AD, man. He, it was talking about the blue people, man. He, that's, say. Hey. What's that dude surfing away? He's just surfing away, man. Hold on, man. There we go, there we go. So, yeah, that's, that's supposed to be the same melanated brother, man. All over the place. this back up, man, they trying to hijack me, man, they trying to hijack me, man, yeah, man, I got a lot going on on my desktop, man, don't, don't judge me, don't judge me, you know, we got a lot of shows, these are all the tribe shows that's dropping, you know, pictures, the shows, you know, got to make sure the stream is looking great, so it's hard, you know, it used to be easy to kind of keep a nice little organized, you know, I, I clean it up every week, man, but it's a lot coming in. It's a lot of drop, man. You can't blame me, man. It's a lot of drop. It's a lot of drop. Kamehameha. All right, cool. We got a little, we got a little smoother now. You know, let's just keep it rocking. Yeah, you see these statues of this Kamehameha. And it's the same Kamehameha. Don't get it twisted. It's the same Kamehameha. It's the same Kamehameha. It's the same Kamehameha. brother that united the islands had the fortune and the takedown again happened in the 1800s and that's why we meditate on Kamehameha we do meditation who got the drop Who got the drop on Kamehameha? Kamehameha. Kamehameha soon uses relations with traders to build up an armory of Western weapons, right? So he had Western weapons. Over time, he and his army were able to use their what? Superior firepower to take charge of most of the Hawaiian Islands. Superior firepower. Superior firepower. Superior firepower. Oh, you mean like the... Like the Kamehameha attack? I mean, this is just the Kamehameha Dragon Ball Z attack, right? That's all we're talking about, right? Right here, right? Kamehameha. He's about to do it. Here we go. Super. Superior weapons. Superior weapons. 
superior weapons energy attack right we're just talking Kamahama fair use fair use fair use fair use fair use fair use just talking energy, frequency, and vibration. Zion, Zion, Super Zion, Super Zion, Zion. Oh man, I mean, you go watch it, you go watch it, you go watch it. I'm just talking about the super duper energy weapons, man. What'd they say? Superior firepower, boss. The rise of the Kamehameha. The rise of the Dragon, the Kundalini, right? Let's go. All right. So we're going to dig more in that Kamehameha. Let's take it to this right here, man. Love to carry me. Yo. Get in that classroom, man. Hit up Caramel Meditations, man. He's always, always focused, drop and drop. Very proud of the bro. Keep it firing on, man. Keep it firing. Keep slaying them hijacks, man. Kamehameha. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. Let's go. Now let's talk to rock. This book is called India Once Ruled the Americas by Jean Matlock. Shabbat Shalom to the home team. We just surfing away, man. Let's go. The reader may remember that in chapter one, I said that in ancient times, Shiva and Kabera were two kings who lived together on Mount Kalasa in western Tibet. All right, so when the Kamehameha... <laughs> You know, they got their little monk robes on. So you see this is all connected to the Indias. You're in India Superior. We already proved that. America is India Superior. We are in swag frequency. <laughs> we got the vortexes. We got the energy weapons, right? We got the Kamaya Kamaya Wa. All right. Now, since they also had spiritual philosophy that ordered mankind to enrich himself mentally and materially as well as spirituality they had the creator the presence of these two deities in central and northern mexico let's get a little bit there we go central and northern mexico or mexico right along with their cohorts consorts berava Beravi, and coarveri it's no coincidence India was in those parts, or India is these parts. Also, Savism and Kubarism had not yet merged as they did in the 1200 BCs during the time of Moses. Now, dodge the timeline. Let's go. <coughs> All right, let's get the babies out. I can safely conclude that these two partner sects entered Mashihoakan between 2000 and 1900 BC. Again, that's the timeline, but let's put it together. 
So they're calling this the time of Moses, right? Moses. And that these people, these sects, are entered Meshi or Moses, Meshi or Moses, Meshi or Moses, Meshi or Khan, Khan. Khan is the priest. Khan is the Preston. Between 2000 and 1900. All right, let's go. Because this very easily could have and possibly happened in the 80s, right? In the, in the, you know, it could be as recent as 1200 AD. Let's go. Keep your, keep your mind uh, fluid. Immediately, the two sects teamed up. They tribed up, marching northward with their warriors, the Yudis. All right. So in India, they're calling them you, you. Yehudis, Yehudis, right? Yehudis, which is what? Judah. In India, they're referring to Judah. They also call them Dravidians. When you drop the R, it's Davidians. David, Davidians. A lot of play play going on to hide the fact that you're in India Superior. So you got the Yudis, the Yudis, UTs, OUEs, OUDs, just like uh, Judah right there, Yuris. Uris, all right, all that is Judah, man. <clears throat> Which they're breaking down to those who came before. Follow me now. So you got these Mashikans or Meshiokans, this in the time of Moses. Let's go. You got the Udis, the Udis. You got those who came before. They conquered all of Central and North Mexico, or they were taking their land back up to and including all of what is now New Mexico and Eastern Colorado, Four Corners. Let's go. We're talking Kalelu, Cibola, Shimbala, calling their empire Sare, or the sun, as the Yaquis called, or themselves told the Spaniards this name is Sarah. Almost sounds like Sarah, right? Like the Saracens, right? May also account for that other Kash Kashmiri or the Sanskrit or Zion script. You know, those S's are Z's sometimes with Sion and Zion. So Zion and Sion also get interchanged. And with the same Sanskrit they could easily be referring to the Zion script. Zion is Zion. Let's go. What's they saying? The term for sun. All right. We dodge the hijacks. Let's see what we're getting at. We're talking about a power and energy, right? Remember Joshua commanding the sun. There's a connection between you and the sun. That's your brother. That's your compadre. Let's go. Which is Helus or Hales. Remember Hales Comet? Hales Comet. Let's go. Given the region of Helusku or Jalisco, almost sounds like Jericho, <laughs> the name it carries even today. Huh? According to the legends of the Puri Pecas, Puri Pecas, listen up, their forefathers came from Peru. Now, what's this all got to do? How's this all lining up with Kamehameha? Man. You're talking about the Americas, the Mexica. You're talking about the originals. The Dragon Kings. The Priests, the Presters, the Comets, the Medias. Probably composed of some kind of partnership between the South American Mexica, Moses Mexica, and the Phoenicians, which is just cold word for these traveling. You know, you can say Moors, you can say all kind of things with the Phoenicians. So, these Mexica, Mexicano, right, like Michigan, Mexicano, Mexican, Mexicano, Mexica. Immigrants were probably taken to the Mexicano, probably taken to Mexicano on Phoenician ships. So, let's pause right there for a second because it reminds me of this Graham Hancock drop in. This is a slightly different one that I wanted to get. Talking about these Moshika and these Phoenicians. Let's go. So he says, uh, Perseus, Perseus, and Suggestion, 
and I have crossed swords before this subject of the Phoenicians. Again, this is uh, this author here is Gene Douglas speaking, but we are going to be, you know, this is off the Graham Hancock website. Let's go. I have decided to describe in a few words as possible just who are the Phoenicians. Let's go. We're just surfing away, man. Let's go. In order to clarify this problem a bit, the, in the first place, the word Phoenician derives from the Sanskrit or Zanskrit Pani. Pani. Bargainer. Misser. Selfish person. Thief. Market. All right. Plus, Ka. People. And again, Ty Battle's reading out the uh, Serpents of Wisdom that this Ka is one of the original, you know, vibrations or tonologies, you know what I'm saying, of these Drakan kingdoms coming from Mu and Lemuria. They always had this denotation, this Ka in their name. It referred to their Drakan energy, Drakan energy, right? So he's saying these Phoenicians. The term Phoenician derives from the Sanskrit Pani, right? Plus Ka, people. The people who hated them called them pa, Panikas or Panikas or miserably selfish people. So that's who the people that hated them, they called them, you know, miserably selfish people, right? So they didn't call themselves Phoenicians. They didn't call themselves Pani. They were being called that by the people who hated them. All right. You know, we're just surfing away. I'm not totally convinced that the Phoenicians themselves would have chosen such a name. That's what we just said. They were being called. These are titles with which to identify themselves. The so-called Phoenicians originated in India. We just are talking about India once ruled the Americas or India is the Americas. Now, the so-called Phoenicians originated in India when Jehovah, or Hawa, right, the same chief of the horse tribes, or Jaovaha, as the word is pronounced in Sanskrit, brought up the large feudal estates in the Canaanites. And see how they say horse tribes? You know what I mean? Something tell me that they are just hiding this dragon energy and they're just calling it, sometimes they call it elephants and horses, but they're just talking about dragon tribes, man. Let's go. So it's saying Jaovaha, as the word is pronounced in Sanskrit, broke up the large feudal estates in the Canaanites. The Cain, the Canaanites. Or Khanate, or Khanate, let's go. So that the nomadic Abels, Abels, right, could settle down on their own land. Now, many of the Haya, Kia, Ya, Yahu, Ja, Ju, pronounced Ju, a term meaning horse chiefs. Come on, man. Where are you getting the horse chiefs from? From the Ja? From the Ya, alright? We know we're talking Dragon Kings. Dodge the hijack. Many of these chiefs became Vanis, Vanis, or international traders. Thus, the term Yavana or Javana really means chiefs of the horse traders or dragon, <laughs> dragon, alright? These were the fathers of the Greeks. The word Greek is derived from a name of one of the ancient Hia tribes. Gracos, Gracos. It is interesting to note that these Yahs <laughs> or Yahvehs became for us God Himself. There is another Sanskrit word, Yavana, which means youth, young. It also derives from Yah, which means fast, speedy. So they're tying it together with these Israelites. Let's get it. I also want to add that although the ancient Hindus were not enamored of the Yavanas. The wise men said that they were to be worshipped as gods because they were the first astronomers. The Christians and Jews kept up the tradition of worshipping the ancient Greeks as God himself. For us, Yahweh or Jehovah is the supreme deity. 
Genesis does not call the Phoenicians Phoenicians. I will quote the biblical description again, giving approximate or appropriate comments. The descendants of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach. Now remember, in Josephus, the book of the beginning, in Josephus, he says there's something tricky about this Moshesh, this Meshesh, that it denotes something. That it denotes something. Something about this Meshach, for those who have eyes to see, it denotes something. It's a sign. It's a sign. It's a mark. It's a sign. Makir, Makir, given as the original name of America. It's a mark, it's a sign. Makir Theodoric Ben Judah, we're talking about the Udes, right? The Udes. And that paraphrased the article entitled. The House of David. Harold is the direct male line of sense. ancestor Rollo, the famous founder of Normandy, progenitor of the English kings. It remains true in any case that Rollo is believed to be the son of Judah. We're talking Machir, we're talking the mark. We're talking the sign, man. So much drop going on with this Totros. Also means Maruk, Mark, Sign, Mark, Sign. Oh, so much drop. Let's go. This Meshesh. All right, let's keep going. The descendants of Gomer, Ashkis, Ripoth, Togor, Togor, Ma. Descendants of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, Ketem, Ketem, Dodium. Right? From these, the maritime nations branched out. The maritime nations, maritime nations, by their lands, each with their language, their clans, their nations. Most of us know that Javan settled the Grecian islands, Japheth. Son of Noah is referred to in the Hindu scripture as Yavepete, Yapete, Yapete. So when you look for Yapete, you're going to connect this Jepet. Listen up. He is also Jupiter. Zeus. So they seem to be, you know, sometimes mislabeling some of these tribes. And Meshesh, when they throw him under the descendants of Japheth, you say, is he really? Or is there something more to this tribe of Moses that's being hidden in the descendants of Japheth? As the book of Josephus points out, for those who have eyes to see. So Japheth is also Jupiter, Zeus, the Hindu Du Pitar, actual Sanskrit translation of Japheth is Yapeti, father of the horse tribes, okay, horse tribes were the North Indian Yadavas, or you who are Devas, the Devas, we're going to get to that, who colonized the entire earth, we're going to read how this you know, Devas, you know, had, you know, beef with these Meshiks. They had beef. So there was a, a snake, first dragon frequency, about to read it, who colonized the entire earth. So these Devas, they're saying, are colonized. Let's go. As leaders, they were known as Kati, Hati, Kad, Ketu, Shetu, Hari, Kasi, Hari. Right? As the common people, they were called Ka. 
For example, among the Aztecs, the common people were called Aztateca. The gentility or ruling class were the Aztateca too. Oh, like Kooltu. Like it's a Kooltu, right? Kato. The common class of Toltecs were the Tolteca. The ruling class was the Tolteca. Kato. Kato. Kato, right? Let's go. These class distinctions ex existed all over the ancient world. Let's get it right here. <coughs> We're just talking Mashika. This is actually a pretty good part right here, man. The Phoenicians were divided into different tribes and nations such as Hindu Eleuths, who in Greece became the Elysians or the biblical Elisha. So we have the prophet Elijah. All right, then you have Elisha, right, which is just connected to the Elysians, man. Ain't there a movie called Elysian? Elysians or Elysia? That's their um, heavenly realm, right, because it's connected to your prophet Elisha. As the Bible says, they had their own nations, languages, clans, other than their common caste distinction. They did not generally feel related in any way, as the Bible says. Ancient mankind knew them only as sea people, the barbarous people to whom Segestan and Perseus refer are the Phoenician slave caste of Tiras, Tabu, and Mese, Moshe, Mese. Let's go. They're calling them slave class, right? We find them in the Americas under basically the same name. For example, Mexica, Mexicans. And just the descendants of that Phoenician slave class. Cast. The following are some ancient names of the Mesic Phoenician slave caste. So these are, when you're looking for the tribes of Moses that they're hiding in this lineage of, of Japheth. These are tribes of Moses. He's not Japheth. But they can't tell you. Because then you're going to connect it to the Mashika in Mexico. And your priest kings. Your cities of gold. So they, they got to give you the drive. But they got to give you a twisted. We're just talking Mosak, right? Mosak, right? Mosak, right? Mosak, right? How do we know we're talking Moses? Because we're talking Mosak, right? We're going to get back on this drop, man. When we're talking about Cappadocia, we're talking about Mosach, the founder. Man, this is from uh, a book called The Making of the Christian Communities in Late Antiquity in the M Middle Ages by Mark F. Williams. We're just talking Mosach, right? Mosach, the founder, man. In the early 5th century, Philostrogius wrote another ecclesiastical history. Philostrogius was a native of Cappadocia and grew up in the shadows of the great Cappadocian fathers. Despite their prominence, Philostrogius did not embrace their versions of Orthodox theology. Instead, he and his family accepted the doctrines of Eunomius, another Cappadocian theologian from Basil and Gregory of Nice, Nice who would personally discredit and vilify, nor did Philostrogius remain in Cappadocia, even since eventually he moved to Constantinople. So they're talking about Khazaria. They're talking about Mazaka, what they're calling in Turkey now, Cappadocia. He included many tidbits of odd information about biblical events in the Roman Empire, and he was interested in legends about Cappadocia, when he mentioned Mazaka, we're talking to Mashika, this lets you know that they're hiding the Mosek, the Meshek tribes of Moses under, falsely under Japheth, which we're just talking Moses. You're just talking Moses, not Japheth. You're just talking Moses. The original name for the city that eventually became Khazaria. 
So before it was Khazari over there in Turkey, we're talking the Byzantine Empire that was taken out in 1453, one year after the 1452 Doom diverses Papu Bu. One year later, they say subjugate all the Sarah's sons, all these Hebrews, and the year after falls the Byzantine Empire in Turkey. We're talking Mazaka, Moses, the original name for the city that eventually became Khazaria, Khazar, right? So the original Khazars are the tribes of Moses, the original Khazari. Are the Mazaka or Mashika. He noted that his name was derived from Mosak. Mosak, the founder of the Cappadocians. So this pushes the Moses story right around this period in the ADs. Mosak is an intriguing primal ancestor. His name suggests some sort of Semitic derivation. Wait. Mosa. These are the Meshi, right? But they just said the Meshi, the Meshi are coming out of the uh, tribes of Japheth. But is it right? Or do you have to see in between the lines? When you're talking Meshe. Just talking Meshe. Surf the wave, man. Oh, that's a lot of dropping this Josephus, man. I'm just checking some of this out when you talk mess shit let's go to book one chapter six I think it is how every nation was denominated from their first inhabitants now we're going to skip right here we're just in the antiquities of the Jews by Josephus let's go so he's talking about the grandchildren of Noah, Japheth, or, or Yapeti, Yapeti. The son of Noah had seven sons. They inhabited so that beginning at the mountains of Taurus and Amanus, they proceeded along Asia. Now let's skip down here. Now as to Javan and Madai, the sons of Japheth. From Madai came the Medeans, who were called Medes by the Greeks, but Javan, Ionia, and all the Grecians are derived. Thobol founded the Thobolites, who are now called Eberes, which is interesting. It's, it just sounds like you're talking Eber, right? And Mosekini, who founded, who and the Mosekini or the Mashika were founded by Mosak. Were founded by Mosak. Now they are the Cappadocians.
Now they are the Cappadocians. So even Josephus is letting you know to look into this. And this is why I started digging into this Cappadocian Mashika connection with Kazaria. Because of this right here. Josephus led me to this. Because what did he say? As much as they try to say that Mesek or Moshikinini or Mosekini or Mosak are, you know, connected to this Japheth. They are now the Cappadocians. And listen, there is also a mark of their ancient denomination still to be shown in the future. For there is even now among them a city called Mazaka. Which may inform those that are able to understand, Drop Nation, that so was the entire nation once called. He said there is a mark. This is a riddle and we're putting it together right before your eyes. Drop Nation, let's get it, man. Let's get it, man. Wakey, wakey, let's get it, man. Hawaii. There is also a mark of their ancient denomination still to be shown. For there is even now among them a city called Mazaka, which may inform you, which may give you the drop if you're able to overstand it. That so was the entire nation once called. What did we just read about this mark? Mark. Mark, Makir, Mark, has been given as the original name of America. So was the entire nation once called. So what they're telling you is that this Mark has everything to do with America. The entire nation was once called the Mark, the Makir. Moses. Mexico is Moses. Moses is everywhere, right? Pull up this link. The Tower of Babel. All right. It's giving you all kinds of drop, man. Look at they're talking JPEF too. JPEF Meshek. But we're saying that's the tribes of Moses hiding in JPEF. Remember, JPEF will hide in the tents. JPEF will hide in the tents. JPEF will hide in the tents. The whole thing has been a riddle so that you can go in JPEF's tent and say, give me back my Moses. Give me the babies out the bath water. Possibly the Moshe and cultures in South America and the now dead Mashika languages in Peru. So when we're talking JPEF and Moses is connecting back to Peru is connecting to South America. Much of northern Rush, Russia, we're talking the Russes, Moscow is Moses, and the region Muscovy, Moses. Much of modern Russia, Russia is named parts of modern Georgia and the Caucasus region, Huns, ancient Mazaka, Mazaka, Mossad, Moshi, Mosca, Moscovy, and Cappadocia. Moscow reflects the old name, possibly migration as far as South American. That's from Tower of Babel, the cultural history of our ancestors by Bodhi Hodge. Mazaka. Mosak. There is a mark of their ancient denomination, ancient primal. Still to be shown, for there is even now among them a city called Mazaka, man. That's the Byzantine, right? Which may inform those that are able to understand that so is the entire nation was called. So before it was called Mazaka over there, it was called Mazaka over here. Because that is the mark on this Mosak, if you're able to, th to understand. For those that are able to understand, Josephus is giving you a riddle in your face bone. For those that are able to understand that so was the entire nation once called. Makir has been given as the origin of the name of America. 
the entire nation is the mark. America is the promised land. Mosak, the founder, Mosak is an intriguing primal first ancestor. His name suggests some sort of Semitic derivation. Semitic, Semitic. If it's Semitic, that means we're not talking JPEG. JPEG is hiding in the tents. We're talking South America. We're talking Peru. Mosak is an intriguing primal ancestor of you, Naga. His name suggests some sort of Semitic, Shemitic. He's from Shem. And his reputation as the founder of the Cappadocian seems to hint at a foundation legend. Foundation for the region that was older than the adoption of Greek myths. We're talking about creation. We're talking about primal, older than the hijack, the Greek myth, the hijack. It's first. Unfortunately, he remains completely obscure. No one's talking about it. No one's checking for Moshe, Mazaka, Mosak, the founder. Philostrosia is in fact knew so little about the legend of Moses that he could not match up the consonants and vowels in order to make sense, to overstand the etymological link between the city's name of Mazaka and Mosak's name. So he shrugged and invented a makeshift phonetic transfer. Makeshift phonetic transfer. That's all they doing to hijack us and confuse us. After the passage of time, the city was called Mazaka through a swerving. It's really Mosak. It's really Moses. In the later Roman Empire, all that survived were whatever legends there may have been about Moses, Mosak. All that survived about the legend of Moses were his name. All right, so you hear you hear the name. You see the movies, right? Christian Bell is now playing Moses. Christian Bell is playing Moses. His reputation and his obscure connection with the name of the city. Obscure. They can't put it together. That it. We're just talking about America. We're just talking about the mark. Josephus told us that. For there is even now among them a city called Mazaka which may inform those that are able to understand that so was the entire nation once called a city called Mazaka. Mazaka. We're talking about South America. We're talking about the Mexica languages in Peru. Let's go. Check it out. The myth or the Reality of Moses, Mosak, the founder, was a lost memory, a fragment of an abandoned past, a casualty of the adoption of the hijack Greek mythology or the imposition of Roman rule or the expansion of Christianity. All these are reasons why you don't remember Moses. All these are reasons why you don't know who Mosak is. The Mashika are. All these are reasons why it's being hidden in JPEG. But Josephus told you the drop that the entire nation was once called Machir, the origin of the name America. For those that are able to understand, there is a mark. There is also a mark. Why is there a mark on Moses? Why is there a mark, a towel, a mark, a crossing, dragon lines intersecting when it comes to Moses, my kid? Because X marks the spot of America. In a Greek, Roman, Christian society, in a hijacked society, Moses, the founder, has become meaningless. Moses, the founder, has become meaningless. Mosak has become meaningless. What's the drop, Graham Hancock? We know we're not talking JPEG because JPEG is connected to Jupiter and Zeus. Hiding in the tents of Shem. Come on, man. 
You're talking about the Meshach, the Muscovy, you know, talking about the Mossack, man. We're talking about the founder, man. Let's get it now. Let's get this for the discipline. So when they're talking about these Mashika in this book, India Once Ruled the Americas by Gene Matlock, these Mashika, Moshika, or the Michoacano, or the Mexicans, <laughs> taking on these Phoenician ships. Man, let's keep going, man. Let's get this dropped. The anthropologist Jose. Remember, we talked about how we cool in the Zuni, the Zuni, how we cool Cibola. The anthropologist Jose Corono Nunez cites the Codex Plan Carte to support his contention that at one time the Tarascan Kingdom included a large part of northwest Mexico, even extending as far as Zuni and New Mexico. He bases his argument on the similarity between the place name Zebulon. Zuni, New Mexico, Zebulon. Which appears in the Codex and Cibola or Shimbala or Shabala or Kalelus, Camelot, right? King Arthur, King David, the promised land. New Mexico, America, Maquir, another name for Zuni is Zebula. It is interesting to note in this context that there appears to be some linguistic connection between the Tarascan and the Zunian. Talking about the UD, the U dog, which is why my kid is. You're talking Judah by means of King David through my kid, the Nazi name, Jewish king of Septimania by Charlemagne in the 700s, man. Septimania is America. These are your Judah king. So you're talking about my kid, the Mark, the Mark, the Maruk. Wow, wow, man. We're talking about Todros ben Judah. You're talking about the Yudis, right? Those who came before the Mashika. Now, the father of the widespread Taraskin, Torah, Torah, Taraskin, Taraskan, kingdom of Torakuri, or Torakuri, as he spelled, as his name was also spelled in India, Tirika, or also Tarak, Yudi. <laughs> Tarak the Conqueror. Don't they got a Tarak in Avatar? You know, you know let me know, man. I think that uh, big red dragon at the end was named Taruk, right? Taruk. All right, let's go. And was a sorry Naga, enemy of the Devas or Aryans. So we got that in the Graham Hancock drop too about the Devas, man. So these who they're calling Devas or Aryans were enemies of the Naga, my Naga. So now you're dealing with the snake versus dragon. War, the Mu versus Atlantis. War. According to Indian mythology, he's extremely conceited and an oppressive, oppressive general who thought that nobody could withstand his armies. The legend states that he was finally defeated and killed by the son of Shiva. The Indian legends call Tarak a demon, right? Because he had a what? An energy wave, an energy weapon against the Devas against the so-called Aryan. However, at the end of the Mahabharata Wars, all the Asuras were turned into demons. The Naga, or Phoenician Tarak that invaded Mexico was, of course, not the same Tarak killed by Shiva's son, Kartikeya. <coughs> so 
So there's a couple different Taraks, maybe. Naturally, the Nagas wouldn't have regarded Tarak as the demon, but as a great hero. So to the Naga, the Taruk was a hero, not a demon, right? A dragon, not a demon, right? Just like in Avatar, Taruk is a dragon, not a demon. The first they demonize him, like, you know, you know, running from him, you know, but then, you know, he becomes the homie. The mother of Taruk, the conqueror of the Meshio Khan, Mosak, Moshe, probably named her son Taruk in honor of the great hero slain by the Aryans. You've seen the dragon of war right before your eyes. The southern Mexico. Now look how they do it. Every nation in the ancient world gave their hereditary leaders titles like Hati, like Haiti, right? Hati, Kasi, Kush. These are also places like Haiti, Hati, Kush. But where is Kush? We got that map, man. We're going to bring that map back out that has Kush right over here in the Americas. The hereditary leaders of many Ameri Indian tribes who addressed their hereditary leaders similarly. The southern Mexico Zapotecs and Mestecs called their priest warriors or their priest kings or Prester Johns Kush. So Kush was a title of a Mexican or Aztec or Mixtec or Zapotec or Toltec warrior priest. That's how you know the Kush is right here. Cali got the Kush. Cali got the Kush, right? You don't go get no Kush <laughs> in Kush. You go to Cali to get that Kush. You know, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Now, Casiqua, like Casique, like the Caciques, all right? Among the Caribbean Arawaks, the hereditary kings of the Meshiokan, Meshiokan were addressed directly and indirectly as Kazanki, almost like the Kazaria, right? The Kazar Kazaria, or the Mazaka. In ancient Persia, the Indus Valley, they would have been equally addressed as the Kashansin, Kasasin, Kushasin. See, see, because they see clearly. Man, all over, man. Man, we're getting to the temple pyramids, man. So, you got this link. Pull this up. We got so much drop that we can just keep going with. Obviously, man, but we're just talking about the Naga, man. All right. And we'll get our dismount right here, man. We're just talking about the Naga in the Zion script mythical semi-divine beings right the dragon kings are divine half human half cobra no half dragon or they are the full manifestation of both they are strong handsome species who can assume either holy human or holy they say serpent right dragon so they can be human or they can be dracon just like it's a culto, just like the definition of a dragon. A dragon is a fierce, violent person, male or female. This man or woman is a dragon. Okay, all right. So they could be human or a dragon, take either form, and are potentially dangerous but often beneficial to humans. So they help humanity, these dragon kings. They help humanity, these Kamehamehas. They unite. They unite the islands. They unite the people, not the hijack. To the hijack, they're fierce and violent. They're violent to oppression. They're violent to invasion. Man, you're just talking about the Meshi, the most. The Mosax, the Mexicas, you're talking about Peru and South America, man. You're just talking about the mark, and you're talking about the sign. The Maruk. The mark of their ancient denomination, says Josephus. Now they got a city called Mazaka or Kazaria. 
and we know it refers to Mosak, the founder, who has now become meaningless because of what? The expansion of Christianity. We're talking about the Nabi, who was fighting against the so-called Aryan or Devas. The Naga. Handsome, beautiful, strong people. Could take either form. They live in an underground kingdom called the Naga Loka, Pata Loka, who is filled with resplendent places, beautiful ornamented with precious gems. The creator deity Brahma relegated the Naga to the nether regions when they became too populous on earth and commanded them to buy only the true evil or those destined to die prematurely. They are also associated with water, river, lakes, seas, wells, and are the guardians of treasure. Cities of gold, who was guarding the cities? And if they're saying Brahma, Brahma hijacked them and relegated them, then we're talking a hijack that came to relegate these people to the nether regions, the nether regions, who hijacked the Naga, who hijacked the Naga, get the drop man, the Mexicano temple pyramids were called Yakata, North Indian, beneficent and malevolent spirits or angels, or dragons, were called Yak, Ya, Yahoo, Yahoo, Yaksa. So, of course, he dodged the hijack, but you know what they're saying. You know what they said. Yaksa. In Sanskrit, the suffix Atta indicates that the animate or inanimate spiritual physical nature of a being is indistinguishable. Thus, the Devata or David huh, would mean divine spirit. So when you really get to the bottom of it, even the divas and the Aryans are coming. These are titles they took from us. We are, the, you know, if Aryan means a pure blood or royal blood, then you are the Aryan. If divas or devata means seeds of David, then you're the Davids. You're the Dravidian. You're the Davidians. You're the Davids. You're all these things, all these titles, man. The pre-conquest Taraskans had special priests for nearly every classification of human activities they were carpenter priest ruler priest ceramic worker priest and other label specialties because like the culture of the immigrant forefathers the Tarascan society was fragmented in the caste now you got the, the caste system right you got the untouchables in India right frequently the suffix Esha was added after each priest cl classification back in ancient India, holy men were frequently referred to as Ish, Isha, Isa, Esha, and the like. It was also a name of God, which they called Shiva. Jesus' Hebrew name is Yeshua. So you can dodge the hijack and get right back to who? Joshua. Shua, Shiva. Shiva, Shua. So when you change that V to a W, you have Shua, 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 who saves, he who saves. You have Joshua, Hawa, Shua. Is Shiva really just Joshua? Hmm. The citizens of ancient Harappa loved gold, silver, and copper. The name was and is true of the Mexicanos even today. Whether Indian, Mestizo, or white, Dodge the Hajj, Mexicanos will go deeply in debt to buy gold and silver ornaments. <coughs> Copper is also a popular metal used for both ornamentation and cookware. 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 All right, so get that copper cookware. And, uh, you know, just for the dismount here, man, you know what I mean? When we're talking about being in our mountains and our trees, and we got to get back in this Rerema, 
This is just to get you ready for part number four of this Rama drop. Mount Rama is the point of the three countries, Venezuela, Brazil, Guyana, right? All right, all right. So, about the year 1900, an old Indian chief of the Guyana slope of Mount Rama was visited by a shining being. All right, another comet, another meteor, another dragon, as he called it. This being revealed to the surprise chief strange things. This being, this dragon, I revealed to this chief strange things he had never heard of before. He was told of the creation world of the world, the entrance of sin into the world, and the fall of man, all by this dragon on Mount Rurema, told this Indian chief, told this priest king, dragon king, about the creation of the world, the entrance of sin into the world, and the fall of man. Uh, his birth, life, death, resurrection, Christ or the anointed, the Messiah's coming, second coming, and all his glory. So don't get to code say he's going to come back. Joshua's going to come back. David's going to come back in his glory. Preston John is going to come back in all the glory of Hawaii. And the final end of sin was also shown to him. The chief, the old chief, was instructed to teach his people all these things, man, it's out the book, Angels of Pincher Creek by Mabel Tooper, or Dragons of Pincher Creek, right? So the old chief was instructed to teach his people all these things, and also to teach them to observe the seventh-day Sabbath. So on Mount Rurema, an Indian chief was given the law by a shining being, or dragon, and taught to observe the Sabbath. He was taught how to lead a clean, healthy life, healthful life. Next, he was told that in a time a man would come with a black book and would teach them more. And so they want to try to tie this into Christ. But come on, man, we're talking about a book, a messenger. We're talking about the law, the frequency, the vibration, and to keep your Sabbath. Even the shining being told you that on Mount Rain. Man, we just surfing the wave, man. Come here, man, and get get with it, man. Get with it or get left on, man. We appreciate your love. We appreciate your your support, man. All the water that you do to keep the tribe fluid, to keep it pushing. Again, you want to support this drive, you want to support our flow, man. You know, you can... Uh, you know, support the GoFundMe's, man. You can do all that, man. Sign up on the site, getting with it. You know, you can rock the drop, rock the shirts, man. Get your size. You know what I mean? We're about to put a whole new order in. Keep it going for you, man. So we can keep rocking our vibration slogans. This is how you support us directly. If you want to support the drop ready directly, man. You know, rock it, rock the drop, man. You know what I mean? Rock the drop. Support the J Stew Baby Fund, man. You gotta keep the stews fluid man support our tribe our emergency fund you, know, you can download our app right there as well man and get all that beautiful drop coming in strong man so much of hive shabbat i appreciate surfing the wave with you man today shabbat shalom and again man support the whole tribe so far we got six dragon sponsors on the wall we need 60 we need 600 we need 6,000. we are being framed and shaped Come give that a high and keep the water flowing. Kamehameha got the water flowing. Kamehameha got the water flowing. And we're just talking energy, frequency, and vibration, man. Energy, frequency, and vibration, man. Kamehameha. Allah <laughs> Hawaii.